Okay, the topic for this talk is simulating house prices. It's a very important topic. It's the process of simulating house prices is very important to the process of pricing mortgage risk, of estimating expected default costs for different kinds of mortgages. But I want you to take away from this that even though I think this is the best approach for uh, differentiating mortgages in terms of their costs and for coming up with some rational estimate of expected default costs, although I think it's the best approach, it is very limited in terms of its precision. You're going to see something that's very computationally in intensive, that looks very scientific, but Underneath it all, is, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of imprecision, um, and a lot of difficulties with doing it. Okay, so <clears throat> simulating house prices means coming up with a whole bunch of different paths for house prices and averaging across those possible paths. So the idea is you average across possible paths. And so what's the basis for these paths? One, you know, for example, we could assume that uh, house price changes every year are normally distributed with a mean of plus 2%. That is, on average, house prices go up 2% a year and a standard deviation of 3%. And if you know about the normal distribution, a standard deviation of 3% would mean that two-thirds of the time the um, house price change would be between would be that 2% plus or minus 3 that would be true two-thirds of the time. So two-thirds of the time you would have a price change that would be between negative one and five percent. Ninety-five percent of the time you would be within two standard deviations which would take you say that ninety-five percent of the time you would be within a three either a range of a three percent decline or an eight percent increase. That would be ninety-five percent of the time under this assumption of mean of two, standard deviation of three. Okay, so just how would we implement that? You actually start with a random number table. Here's a table of random numbers that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And the first row of the table has a number <clears throat> that's 1.276 with a minus sign after it, which I guess means that the number is negative 1.276, then negative 1.218, and so on. So these are the numbers. Uh, I got these from uh, a, a book, classic book called A Million Random Digits with 100,000 Normal Deviates. That's the 100,000 the 100, Normal Deviates. It's a book that was put out by the RAND Corporation. There are plenty of ways to generate random numbers, but that's where I took them from. And <clears throat> I put them into a spreadsheet. And I put them, uh, I, I said, I just looked at, let's say, six years, years one through six, and then I put the, the, took those first six random numbers from that table and put them into these first six years. Then I adjusted them, and adjusting them means multiplying by the standard deviation of three, because the uh, original numbers is based on a standard deviation of one, and then adding our mean of two, because the original assumption is zero. So when you multiply by three and add two, you get these adjusted random numbers. And with these, and then Finally, I just apply these adjusted random numbers as percentage changes 
to an original house price of $100,000. So first the price falls by 1.8%, then it falls by another 1.6%, then it goes up and goes up and goes up and goes up. Now you notice that it goes up here even though the random number, original random number is, is negative. That Again that's the, because the original random number assumes a mean of zero and I'm saying let's assume that the mean house price change is two percent so that adjusts it upward. So by the end of this six-year simulation the house price has gone up. And of course what you would do in simulating house prices is you would take these random numbers <laughs> and apply them in for every period of the house and then you would take a whole bunch of paths like this. You could take hundreds or even thousands of different paths of random numbers and then you would average across all those paths what the um, how house prices would behave and and converting from the behavior of house prices to mortgage default so here's an example where the house price stays fairly high throughout the life of the mortgage uh, or throughout these six years and so you wouldn't expect to see very many defaults uh, along this path, <coughs> but um, there might be other paths where you would uh, you would have lots of defaults, and there would be still other paths where there'd essentially be zero chance of defaults. And so you'd average over all these paths and say, well, on average, this would be our default experience. Now back to this this assumption of a, using a mean of two percent and a standard deviation of three percent. Uh, obviously, that's uh, that was arbitrary. There, there really are two elements there. One, two types of uncertainty. One is what will average prices look like. Uh, let's say over the next 30 years, or maybe well, let's just let's even say 10 years, make it even a little simpler. What what are they going to look like? <coughs> and so that's an estimate about the uncertainty about the future. And the other thing the element is is how will individual house prices vary around the national average. So if we absolutely knew that the national average was going to be a 2% increase in house prices, and remember we're talking about a nominal increase, so <clears throat> that is even if, if housing isn't a greatly appreciating investment, uh, if you had overall inflation of 2% and housing just kept up with inflation, you would expect prices to go up by 2%. So uh, a 2%. So this is partially. Uh, so the overall home price comes from general inflation and then any uh, performance of housing above or below general inflation. That's what what you're really trying to guess with the first thing. And with the second thing, how will prices vary around the national average? So again, suppose we knew for sure that the national average is going to be 2%. Any particular house is going to vary around that average because of local conditions, because of how well it's maintained, and so on. So they're really embedded in, in a mean and standard deviation are really two types of uncertainty. One is sort of variation around the trend and the other is uncertainty about the trend. So they're really two very different factors at work uh, in trying to uh, come up with these parameters that we're going to use to simulate house prices. Um, <coughs> Another thing to think about is whether we want to pretend, to pretend or assume that changes in house prices are independent from year to year. 
or whether there's a tendency for them to accumulate over time. That is, if, and that could be true both of the, at the national average, are we, uh, are we likely to see a, um, a, Accumulative trend where the national average goes well above 2% or well below 2%? And are we likely to see an individual house price, rather than fluctuate randomly around the national average, are we likely to see large cumulative trends? So that's something to think about in creating this kind of simulation. And finally, another problem in terms of thinking about this simulation <clears throat> is the fact that what we're most interested in is not the center of the distribution, that is the mean. What matters most are <clears throat> what is what we call the tail of the distribution, that is how likely is it for how for prices to fall Right? We don't really, if prices go up, we don't care much whether they go up 1%, 2%, 5%, or whatever, as long as the person, you know, as long as the person isn't continually extracting equity from the house, any price increase means that they're going to have positive equity and we're not going to have default risk. So we have to focus only on the paths where prices end up falling. And uh, and what matters is how much, because if the cumulative price decline is, let's say, <clears throat> only 8%, so let's say if you had an 8% decline, but they made a 10% down payment, again, there's no risk. So we're interested not in, so the important thing that we have to simulate correctly isn't so much just, it isn't just a matter of guessing the average about right. We really have to have the properties of the tail right. And there, even assuming a normal distribution may be incorrect. If, if, you, if the true distribution has fatter tails than a normal distribution, that, it, that is, that there are higher probabilities of extreme events than a normal distribution, this whole process will be misleading and misguided. So let me emphasize the points of potential error because again this is going to be, you know, you're going to create thousands of paths, only a computer could create all these paths, you know, gener generate all these random numbers, add up values over all these random numbers. There's going to be a lot of calculation and a lot of thought goes going into setting up the calculation so it's going to appear very scientific but at the bottom of of all this are going to be some very tricky assumptions very uh, unreliable assumptions the, again you have to say something about the path of prices going forward what we're going to be doing is averaging a whole bunch of possible paths but in the end, there's only going to be one path for national average home prices. And so we're, you know, <clears throat> we're making some guesses about the future. The guesses are, you know, almost all of them are going to be wrong. There's only going to be one true path going forward. Uh, and so our, the accuracy of our forecast for default costs is only as good as our accuracy of our estimate of the path of how average house prices going forward and that's inherently not going to be very accurate. I mean, who knows what five years from now the state of the housing market is going to be, the state of overall inflation is going to be. We don't know. So there's uh, tremendous uncertainty there. We don't know what the pattern of regional variation is going to look like going forward. We have, you know, but we have to assume something. Uh, so that's and that's that second uh, source of uncertainty. So this looks l like a very unreliable method for for forecasting average default costs, and it is re relatively unreliable. But it's better than doing nothing. One of the advantages is it gives a clear picture of the 
uh, relative default costs of let's say a 10% down payment versus 20% down payment so you get you 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 at least come up with some re <coughs> reasonable basis for pricing the additional risk on a 10% down payment loan versus a 20% down payment loan. And I would say that's the, the main advantage of going through this simulation process uh, is that you at least get a, a, a picture of relative risk <coughs> of these uh, of different things. Although even again the relative risk picture will be affected by uh, what you choose as your mean and your standard deviation and whether you think things are normally distributed or have fat tails, whether you think uh, unusual house price developments uh, accumulate or whether you think house prices move randomly from period to period. Again, there are all these assumptions will even affect relative default costs, but even more they'll affect your average or absolute uh, default costs. So uh, what you, I want you to take away from this is that I think this is the best way, the most reasonable way to come up with quantitative estimates of default costs and you need to come up with quantitative estimates. But even though it's the best way, it's really not precise, it's not certain, it's not something that you can attach uh, a great deal of confidence in.